Hello, I'm Love Coach Kaka Thomas. And I'm Love Coach Emily Oram. And we're here to talk about religion. And I think the first thing that we wanted to just differentiate is the difference between religion and spirituality. And uh, my understanding is that as we are entering the Aquarian Age and leaving the Piscean Age, to the Piscean Age, overall, we felt the need to get to God through an institution, through a religion, through Jesus or through Mohammed or through the prophet. Um, in the Aquarian Age, we are creating our own direct connection to God, our own direct connection to Source. And I think most of the people who are going to watch this, most of the people in our tribe, have gone through a disassociation and disconnection from the organized religion that they were raised with. Probably because they saw the hypocrisy, probably because they saw the institutional part of it, and because there's this deep longing for our own direct connection to God and Source. One last thing I'll mention, and then turn it over to my partner here, is that um, if you really study the roots of the Christian church, and most of us were probably raised in the Christian tradition, um, the Christian church was primarily founded by converted Romans. And so they had that very romantic, conquer the world attitude. And so the Catholic church really figured out how can we conquer the world through this religion. Um, and in that process, there was a tremendous amount of shame the whole focus being Jesus died for your sins. He suffered on the cross, tortured and crucified for your sins. Whoa, I mean, that's just pretty, you know, we're, we're honoring a guy who was tortured and crucified for our sins. And then the whole idea, which was nothing that Jesus actually said, if you read the Gospel of Thomas, which are actually direct quotes from Jesus, there's nothing in there about hell. Um, but the whole idea that uh, if we don't go through the church and do what the church tells us to do, we're going to be bad and we're going to go to hell. But if we're good little boys and girls, we get to go to heaven. Which again, most of us realized early on, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think what I've really seen the most um, out of coming out of organized religion is really adopting a, kind of a martyr-based paradigm. Mm -hmm. Right, like I have to suffer, put myself last, I have to submit to be good, um, I have to, you know, right my wrongs. And there's just a lot of shame that we take on and we criticize ourselves. And the more that we do that, we tend to do that to everybody around us. And that was created as basically a source of manipulation for mm -hmm. control and power and punishment and better than, less than, all of these themes that we see that are so rampant in our society and how much pain and suffering that they're they're causing and so many of us are really uh, committed to breaking out of that breaking out of that by redefining ourselves. Um, who are we what is important to us obviously acknowledging the consequences of our behavior but not from a place of, of shame from a place of compassion understanding and these principles, I think, at the heart of spirituality in many religions are the roots mm. of what the teachings are. Love, compassion, understanding, um, unity, coming together, com mm. communion. And, and communion really starts, I think, in a large way with, with ourself, mm. with really communing with what works for us, what are our higher values, what are the values of, of love that we really aspire to and that we adhere to? And how can we align that within ourselves and whatever that means to us? And then through that, bring that, those virtues, bring those qualities of being out into the world. I think for me, what stands out in what she said, especially was what, however that means to us and really appreciating Kelly Guava and, and the several events that we did there. And we did a lot of um, events that were of a spiritual nature, but very open, you know, mm -hmm. and so I love that in our tribe we're not Dogmatic. Exactly. It's <laughs> not about a dogma yeah. and promoting a dogma. It's about uh, coming together in communi community and hey, how are you learning about love? What are the lessons of love? How can we share more love? Uh, but it's based on more of a, an experience than a dogma. 
I know even in vulnerability, when I first met Scott, I had very clear teachings of what worked for me to connect to my higher self or God or spirit. There's so many names for God. And I remember <clears throat> when we were bringing that to our classes, Scott was like, wow, I really see that these are the ways that work for you. But let's also open up the field to help people to connect to what, what that is for them. Mm -hmm. And it really opened my perspective and re recognized that what works for one person may not work for somebody else. And there's nothing right or wrong about that. It's actually a blessing to be able to know that we're, we're all different. We all have what works for us. How can we use those differences as a way to get curious and to celebrate the diversity of beingness, which I feel like is what's connecting us to our roots. If you look at everything around you, we are a colorful melting pot of diversity, culturally, um, belief system wise. And I think most of the pain and suffering is because we've created a right wrong about, about all of that. Instead of learning to embrace our differences through the power of curiosity and understanding. Ooh. So. I think uh, the last piece we want to talk about is our own personal relationship to God's source. And um, I'm really grateful that probably one of the most important parts of my life is that I have a very strong faith. Um, mm -hmm. And I have a deep belief that ultimately it's all good. And ultimately I'm protected, I'm supported. Even if I die, you know, the body will die, but the spirit moves on. And, and I've been blessed to have non-drug-induced, multi-dimensional experiences, meaning I've actually experienced myself in the astral world, I've experienced myself in alternate realities, and what we would call historical uh, past or future. I've experienced that, and so I believe it. And so it's given me this incredible faith, which I'm really grateful for. And I think a, a big part of why Emily and I have done really well together uh, is that at the core, we both have a strong sense of faith. And I'd love for you to talk about your beautiful relationship mm. to God. <clears throat> well, for me, I think the conduit of what connects me to my higher self or God is usually the power of my heart and love. And allowing myself to come to those places, sometimes it's actually moving through pain, moving through fear, but surrendering through that experience to the power of humility, grace, and love. And that's actually a very kinesthetic, emotional experience for me. And then through that, through that feeling, that connection to myself, I'm able to literally imagine myself expanding out into the field of, again, like feeling the field around me, expanding and, and feeling my, um, that I'm way beyond the body, that there is an essence, a grace, a an energy life force that is running this ship <laughs> way more. The force is with you. <laughs> way more than my little pea brain can even imagine. And when I'm able to actually get into those places of surrender, which is usually that feeling those beautiful feelings and breaking myself open to to love and awe. Awe is a really big one for me. The feeling of awe and wonder breaks me usually open and love breaks me open to grace. And then there's this experience of like, wow, there is, I'm so much more supported and guided than I could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. And and it's this just reverence is, is really the, the word that comes to mind, reverence, humility, and grace that permeates my body and permeates this knowing. Um, and it's quite an exquisite place to live. And I really, my desire is to bring that as much as possible into my daily life so that I can remember that and I'm not living in that kind of lower fear state. In conclusion, we really try and incorporate this into our relationship. We start every day with prayer. Um, and prayer is sometimes affirmations, sometimes listening in. Yes, I know it's nine minutes. <laughs> um, so uh, may you also cultivate those of you who are watching, celebrate the ways that you cultivate faith and spirit. And thanks for giving us this chance to talk about it. Thank you.